Greetings, YouTube. Over on the Google Groups, I think that's what it's called now, um, the, the latest iteration of essentially the long lineage of news groups, um, there's one dedicated to Gamma World. And we were on Yahoo for a long time till they went away. And uh, we moved over to, to, uh, to Google. And if it weren't for one guy, that particular discussion would probably die out. That, that group would probably just not make it if it weren't for Ralph Glatt. Um, now, Ralph has been someone I have known of, around Gamma World for so long, I can't remember not knowing Ralph Glatt. Um, the name is just rather unique, um, and it sticks in my mind, and I just I can't remember not knowing him and not knowing what he has contributed to the Gamma World community. And he recently asked a question which was, what makes Gamma World, Gamma World? Now, this is the 1992 edition of Gamma World, which is my favorite. Um, this is my favorite. This is, the, this is my most well-used copy of this. I've got a plastic cover on it, and I put it on myself because I wanted to keep it around. But I also carry a copy of it right here. <laughs> I have a copy of, uh, actually, I have a copy of, I think, first, second, and fourth, maybe the third's on there too, of Gamma World on my phone. So I always have Gamma World references right there when I need them or want them, as well as a number of other PA systems. And that's what Ralph was asking. There's lots of post-apocalyptic games out there, okay? They've existed forever, as long as the hobby's been around, pretty much. We've had some kind of post-apocalyptic system. Now, Gamma World First Edition, which I still have my boxed copy of that, and all of the modules for it, was the first tabletop role-playing game I ever purchased. Um, quickly to be followed by, like, I think I picked up Metamorphosis Alpha, um, which is what's with its wonderful colored uh, cover, because the original first edition Game World had a black and white cover on the pamphlet inside. As remember, box game. And uh, that was before I bought my first D&D book, even though D&D was the first game I ever played. And I fell in love with Game World. Now, when I fell in love with Game World, I was what, 14, I think, or 15. So my standards for what I should expect from a setting were admittedly low. Okay, So it was very bare bones. It doesn't actually present you with a particular setting. It presents you with America in a post apocalyptic environment. And some of the modules do definitely point you in the direction of kind of a concept of what the world looks like in the, you know, the, the new earth. Um, and that openness appealed to me because it was kind of chaotic. But then again, we were all teenagers and that's kind of a chaotic time. And so we would run up, roll up characters. And I mean, I've got notebooks full of characters I rolled up over the years just because I thought it was fun to make up, create new characters. And quite a few of them um, have been Game World characters. In fact, I have one who I really should do a video about him named Lando Lizard Wings. Absolutely tasteless, puerile name. It's a teenage concept. But Lando Fl uh, uh, Lizard Wings was a guy I created in first edition, and I converted him to second, I converted him to third, I converted him to the 1992 fourth edition. Every time there was a new edition, I would convert him over to the new one. Not that there was a lot of difference between first and second, but there was some. Um, I mean, I used material from both on the fly, and I never had a problem with, either, with doing that. Um, and I just love that character. And, and that began to get me thinking, why did I love Gamma World so much? Well, it's the first PA game I ever encountered. And frankly, it's one of the first post-apocalyptic games I can, can remember ever existing set in the United States of America. Because remember, Metamorphosis Alpha is a post-apocalyptic game, but it's set on board a ship flying through space. It's a little bit different of a vibe. Okay, you've got that capsule concept. It's a closed world. Gamma World, though is here in Manchester, which is what they call the town I'm in. Um, and the new Earth is just ours through the lens of 
catastrophe, an apocalypse. And the years, the centuries after that, well, people are rebuilding. And as someone on the group said, one of the aspects they loved about Game World is the whole concept of rebuilding. And I have to agree with them. Um, now, realistically, everything would have been built far faster than Game World presents itself. Okay, lots of PA games are, have very plastic concepts on what is and isn't rebuilt. They have very plastic concepts on, uh, on entropy, you know, so like some things really should have worn out a long time ago, but we want them around, so they're around. So we play with those plastic ideas, and that really fit the vibe of Gamma World. That plasticity that we can do here and here, and yes, these things shouldn't probably exist at the same time, but they do, and we like them, so we're happy. So we just kind of ignored the fact that all this stuff is going on at the same time. All these different factions are vying in ways that realistically they would have either worked out their differences to some kind of functioning structure or they would have wiped each other out. They wouldn't still be in that state that is presented in the game. And part of that was the cryptic alliances. And someone else in the group mentioned that the cryptic alliances very much give Game World a flavor that doesn't exist in many other post-apocalyptic games. Now, for example, you look at Fallout, there are factions, but they're not quite the same as the cryptic alliances. The cryptic alliances were very much groups that were founded around a certain ideology. And they had a level of depth to me, even though they're, they, even though you could might even say that many of them were just a thumbnail sketch, that just felt that they fit into the into the world. They were they were really part of the warp and weft of the reality in a way that the factions from like Fallout they they seem very surface. They they don't give me that feeling of depth, and maybe it's because it's a, you know it's a computer game. Maybe that's just part of the problem of, of of that whole genre i'm maybe i'm not or maybe i'm wrong but i've watched a lot of people play fallout i'm not i don't play video games myself but i love that some creators have done with that game and the stories they've created and the characters they created and i watched gopher from gopher live because he does such deep immersive games and i love john from many of true nerds because he plays the game in so many creative ways but those factions are not the same as the cryptic alliances. I mean, if you say Red Death, I get a visceral feeling in my head. The Restorationists, again, boom, I have a feeling in my head. And it's a connection to that game. And part of this is nostalgia. Again, first post-apocalyptic game I ever paid, played, first gaming product ever purchased so i have a connection to that in a way that i'm never going to have a connection to any other game when i read mutant year zero i was reading mutant near year zero as someone who owns dozens of post-apocalyptic games who has read novels and seen movies and has read comics and there's decades of difference between Gamma World and Mutant Year Zero. I can't look at Mutant Year Zero with the same eyes I saw on first edition Gamma World. Or no, not even the same eyes I saw on the 1992 edition, which is technically called the fourth edition. It just isn't based on the fourth edition D&D rules, so I make that distinction. Um, because there's just too many de de decades in there. It's too much accumulated knowledge and frankly, cynicism. I've seen so many tropes in, in tabletop role-playing games. They, I know the beats. I know the rhythms of them. And I can quickly figure out if a game is cool or a game is not cool in very short order. Um, and for me, uh, there were aspects of Mutant Year Zero I loved and there were aspects I hated. Um, but for this, it isn't just the nostalgia. If someone were to ask me if I could only take one game with me, one game, this is it. 
Why? Because I could make this work for almost anything. I could run supers with this. I could run high fantasy with this. I could run pretty much anything I want to with this set of rules. And in many ways, this to me feels like the early draft of the third edition. Because there were aspects of this which seemed fresh and fresh. And again, I saw them in third edition. So I very much see this as a bridge between the old school style games, which is first edition was and second edition was. Third edition was a different thing, used a different set of mechanics completely. Um, between the, the original game world and third edition D&D, I see this as a bridging game, a game that is in there and in many ways hits a certain sweet spot for me. And now I'm a big 3.5 fan. I love P1, first, path, first Pathfinder, first edition, still my favorite favorite version of D&D ever. Um, but this is my favorite game because you can do so much with it the rules for playing mutant animals and whether rather they look completely normal barring mutations or they're 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 anthro you know anthropomorphic they're they're humanoids and i love anthropomorphic animals like they're so cool and there's a nice selection here it's a big enough selection um, with enough information from each little each race that you could easily adapt any other Species, sorry, not race, species. You can easily adapt any species somebody wants to play that isn't in the game. It's not going to take you long to, to, to figure out how to run that. Okay, okay, I can pluck this, this, and this to, out of these other species, put them all together, boom, there you go. There's, there's your new species. Um, you can play plants in this. Plants. That is so darn cool. This makes me giddy just thinking about all the possibilities. And I think that may be what I love about Gamma World. It makes me just want to jump back in. I will read this for entertainment. I've read it, I don't know how many times. But I've read it at least once a year for all the years I've been alive. Since I bought this game. I know it inside and out all its beautiful elements and all its flaws. Now, can I give you every single rule off the top of my head? No, I can't. I'll be honest with you. I can't do anything with that. I'm lucky I can remember my social security number. But I know the spirit and the feeling of this. And that's what Ralph was talking about. What is Gamma World? Gamma World is that feeling to me. That giddy anticipation I pick this up, this wrinkled, old, beat-up copy of a game. And it just hits me right here. It makes me happy. This brings me joy. I will never get rid of this. This will be with me forever. I will always carry a copy on my phone. And I carry some 40 gigs worth of RPG stuff on my phone. But there is an entire folder on here named Gamp World. And this is in it. As, is the, as, as are the original versions and all the modules. That's what I think Gamp World is. It's not just the Cryptic Alliances and the cool animal species and the mutant humans and the and the pure strain humans and the and the plants you can play it isn't the awesome cryptic alliances like the incredibly evil fascist knights of the of the of the uh knights of humanity which is such a great name for a cryptic alliance knights of humanity that is just it's just beautiful absolutely and utterly beautiful it's genius i own every version of this game, as well as some derivative like Omega World, which I also own a copy of that. And I own dozens and dozens of other post-apocalyptic games, all of which, to my mind, have to, to some, in some ways, pay homage to this. 
and some are doing it like Mutant Future. That's just a modern version based off of the OGL of first edition Gamma World. That's all it is. Just one that's more approachable to the people today because it's readily available and supported. And I have a copy of Mutant Future on my phone too. Gamma World's a feeling. Gamma World is a place in my head and my heart. It is endless possibilities. I want to create right now a new character based on a stoat. So I watched a stoat video this morning. They're adorable little be be beasts. And they would make great mutant animals for Gamma World. And that's what I love about this. I can never pick this up. Just physically pick it up and not start to have some kind of an idea pop into my skull. That's what Gamma World is. It's the feeling, it's the possibilities, it's the memories, it's the variety and options and versatility of the system. Yes, I know that that like percentile systems often feel more science fiction, but this isn't science fiction. It's science fantasy. And D20 is the first system I ever played, and it's still the one I love. Yeah, I know each one's a 5% uh, jump from one to the other. Not quite as, uh, you know, granular as percentiles, but who cares? And I love the fact that this game has some basic classes, the Enforcer, you know, the Scout, the, the, the Esper, and the, and the Mechanic class, which I can't remember the name of them off the top of my head. I always think of them as Gearheads or, you know, or, or, or something like that. Um, but it's just so useful and so cool. It's got enough, I, enough for everything I need and not too much that I don't. It's not true OSR, but it's also not the level of complexity that P1 has, even though I love P1. And it doesn't have the level of simplicity that First Edition Game World had. And I love First Edition of Game World. It's got enough, but not too much. It's a thing that lives in my head. It's a game, and it's a place, and it's a feeling. And there's so much about it I love. And it can be all those things to me whenever I want to. All I gotta do is pick it up. And the ideas start to flow. That's why you see me do, do make so many references to it here on my channel every Saturday. I've referenced this game a thousand times. Actually, that may just well be a literal uh, statement. I don't know how many gaming videos I've made. <laughs> Been doing this for 12 years. Um, so, yeah. I guess that's what all I got, Ralph. I hope it answers your question. I know it's rambly, and I'm sorry, but that's how my brain works. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you for everything you've ever done for the community. Without you, we wouldn't be here. And you've always lived in my head someplace. And I can't imagine a world without you. And uh, I'm glad you're here. I hope you stick around a hell of a lot longer than the apocalypse.